If you don't know our first guest, you should. He's from a group that's fighting for your rights online every day. From the Electronic Frontier Foundation, we got Corey Doctorow back on the screen savers. Corey, hey, good to see you again. Welcome back, man. So we, the bumper stickers, advertisements, Rolling Stones ads, let the music play. Right. It's kind of a new, you know, the EFF has done a lot of stuff, obviously, for rights online. They've also been sort of become a little more famous or notorious lately for the what to do if you think the RIA is going to sue the living bejesus out of you. Right. Uh, you know, additions to the EFF website. And now you guys are taking kind of a different tack on, on defending peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. Yeah, I, we thought it was time to actually start going on the offensive, to actually mm -hmm. start calling for, for some positive action. Um, we have in this country... A hundred years of technology colliding with with uh, with copyright. You know, it was mm -hmm. the piano roll once upon a time, uh, then television and radio, live performance, over and over again, cable TV. We hit these these collisions, and the tried and true solution to these collisions is to find a way to legalize the practice that people are engaged in. We didn't say, you know what, all you p piano roll vendors, you know, right. the piano roll vendors at the beginning of the recorded music, re recorded music industry, you're all illegal. What we said is we're going to change copyright law to find a way to compensate artists mm -hmm. and let Americans keep listening to piano rolls. And, 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 you know, people are probably snickering at home going like, piano rolls, all right, who cares? But it was actually a way to, to take copyrighted material and with a matter of basically running it through a machine, pretty quickly you could have a really insane number of copies of piano rolls. Sound right. and, familiar? And more than that, it was illegal, yeah. right? I mean, what you had were pirates mm -hmm. who would take a piece of sheet music, right. right, transcribe it into a piano roll, and distribute it to Americans for money, right? And the rec and the, the music industry of the day s tried to sue them. They wigged. Right? And what Congress said was, well, you know what? Piano rolls are too important to just sort of put back in the bottle, okay. right? Copyright and technology have collided. We're going to solve this by creating a license that says anyone can make any piano roll provided they pay the person who wrote the music a little bit of money. Okay, I have my cynical bald spot on today, so I'm going to ask okay. a question. Did Congress care more about the constituency then than they do now? Because it seems like these days most of Congress is all about protecting copyright and making large companies richer. Well, it, it is really I strange. Believe I just I mean... said that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, comrade. <laughs> soon, we will, soon we will take this entire section of the Yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> no, uh, you know. It's, it's really strange because we have, as I say, re success after success right. after success in uh, accommodating copyright to technology, right? And we always, the way we do it is by changing copyright. And now we have this weird and dangerous notion that's completely unproven that the way that we can solve a, a collision between technology and copyright is by suing 60 million Americans, which, which the recording industry is well on its way to doing. It takes a lot of time and a lot of lawyers. Well, yeah. One in six Americans is engaged in file sharing, mm -hmm. right? By taking the music that's been made available on the file sharing network, because you know 80% of the music ever recorded isn't available for sale anywhere in the world, but mm -hmm. it's all out there on the file sharing networks. Taking all of that music well, wait, 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 eighty percent of the music that people are sharing. So it's no longer not like two hundred and fifty million college students sharing Britney Spears and like Metallica tunes. You're it's saying, everything. Okay. It's everything is available on the P2P networks, okay. right? It's the largest library of human creativity ever built. Shouldn't we find a way to compensate artists for that and make it legitimate? Okay. I don't use peer-to-peer -peer file sharing because basically, one, it usually sounds awful. The stuff I've heard. And two. I believe artists should be paid for their work. I write for so them, do we. right? So, yeah, so do I. How, how, do you, how do you work out a blanket license agreement where everybody gets a couple cents every time one of their... I mean, wh how? There's How's three hard questions mm -hmm. to answer. How much money do you collect? Mm -hmm. Who do you pay it to? And who do you collect it from? So you can end up with sort of the recording artists in a battle with the recording companies over whether the money goes to them or to... But we have solved... We, we have to answer those questions every time we create one of these licenses. We solved it with cable TV. We solved it with internet radio. You know, with internet radio, when they created the compulsory license to let you stream, right. um, Congress looked at it and they said, you know, there are a lot of artists who have deals with their labels that say 100% of the money collected for internet play goes directly to the label. But we uh -huh. don't think that's fair. We want to compensate artists here, not labels. Sure. And so what they did was they said a minimum percentage of the money collected goes straight to the artist no matter how their contract works with their label because that's the fair thing to do. Right? And we're proposing that if Congress can open proceedings mm -hmm. into answering these three hard questions, who do you collect money from, who do you pay it to, how uh, and how much do you collect, that we can get out of this mess, right? And these are easier questions to answer than how do you stop file sharing without right. compromising freedom, without or making the internet go away, internet. without suing one in six Americans. So we got bumper stickers, we got an ad in Rolling Stone. Have people have to, oh, sorry about that. That better? Yeah. Uh, obviously, I know there's a bunch of people in this room who trade files. There's a bunch of people out watching who trade files. How do they get involved? They, they go to www.eff.org slash share. Okay. And there they'll find a form that allows them to send mail to their Congress critter, encouraging their Congress critter to 
open proceedings into answering these questions, to doing the right thing, right? We, we keep seeing bills like Orrin Hatch is saying, oh, you know, if you engage in online infringement, we should write malware that makes your computer explode, right? right? Uh, Berman Koble, who are just slightly saner than Hatch, have, have proposed things like turning anyone who shares a file into a felon, right? Taking away your right to vote, making you, sending you to prison. So one what file, are you in for? One uh, file, right? You know, minimum of... jail sentences. Um, before that, they said, you know, uh, uh, Hollings had this proposal that anyone who makes a computer or general purpose piece of technology should have to get the permission of the recording industry, the film industry, before they ship it. I mean, the proposals get weirder and weirder. A right of revenge right. at one point, you know, if you, if you believe someone's infringing your copyright, you should be able to hack their computer. These are ridiculous ideas. They're dangerous. They're untried. They've never worked before. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to believe that they'll work now. And more importantly, they could inconvenience all of us that don't steal music. Well, living. exactly. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if people who were law-abiding could be treated as though they were law-abiding? That would be nice. Right. So write to your Congress critter. Ask them to open proceedings into ways to get out of this mess that don't mm -hmm. involve blowing up the Internet and treating one in six Americans like a crook and compensating artists while we're at it. Right? That's what we're asking people to do. EFF.org forward slash share. Share. Okay. Now, yeah. you've got some pretty good news. You've been writing, you know, for people who don't know Corey other than an instigator here on the show, he also writes a lot of pretty good science fiction. What's going on with the book? So, uh, my last novel, Down and Out in the Magic Kingdom, came out in January. Now I've got a short story collection coming out in about two weeks called A Place So Foreign and Eight More with an introduction by Bruce Sterling Very from nice. Four Walls, Eight Windows Press. Uh, you can pre-order it today on Amazon. It should be on shelves by, you know, just after Labor Day. Um, and uh, next novel's coming out in January again, a book called Eastern Standard Tribe. I'm convinced you don't sleep. Uh, it's, you know, sleep is for the weak. Beautiful concept. Corey, thank you for taking the time to talk to See us. Ladies and gentlemen, if you think the RIA is after you, we've got links to their subpoena hit list. We've got links to join the EFF. We've got links to fight back and maybe even some sound advice. It doesn't involve fighting. Go to thescreensavers.com. Check it out.